Welcome to this quick tutorial on using the WS2812 type NeoPixels with an Arduino. Now in the examples I'm going to be showing I'm using an Arduino Uno but you could use any type of Arduino. You could use an ESP32 and basically choose your microcontroller but uh, the example should work the same for most of them providing that you can use the Arduino IDE. Now in this exam in this tutorial I'm going to be doing four examples. Um, I'm doing this tutorial because I've had a couple of requests over the last few days about how to use these. So we're going to do a simple tutorial on how to basically get the lights on. Then we're going to look at a very quick example of how to use multiple strings of NeoPixels. And then in the third and fourth examples we'll be looking at how to use millis to uh, adjust timings on these things so we can create various effects that will not interfere with each other. Um, so if you wanted to add buttons or other things into your code, the uh, NeoPixel effects wouldn't interfere with that code. So let's get started. So if you're new to NeoPixels, here's a bit of a lousy picture of some. Uh, the ones I bought came on a roll. I probably 150 200 near pixels on there and if you look you've got the near pixel lights on each um, segment here different types have the near pixels spaced at different distances one other thing to be aware of is this particular strip is 5 volts there are some that are 12 volts now if you look on this particular strip I have a ground uh, D0 which is the digital pin that's going to control them and I have five volts. Um, if you go to the Digital Town website there's a, a note on how to wire these things up but basically it's pretty simple. Five volts goes to five volts, ground goes to ground and DO goes to the digital pin that you're going to use to control these things. One of the great things about NeoPixels is one digital pin is enough to control all of these NeoPixels on the roll. In fact, I'm told you can control about 2,500 of these off an Arduino Mega, but I've not got a need for that much light. So, just some things if you're using these, you'll notice that they're set in sections. If you want to, you can just cut these strips off as you want. And if you're building model railways, uh, which some of them, someone who requested this is building a model railway, what you can actually do is you can cut the strip here and then bridge the gap with a wire so you could move this near pixel into one place another near pixel into another place mount them in different places with just simple wiring in between them so you don't have to leave them fixed in this strip this particular strip that mine have come with is self-adhesive there are other types that come on strips that are waterproof uh, they are pretty tough little things. I've uh, warmed them up quite a bit with a soldering iron and I've even hot glue gunned them into position and they all still seem to work. So they're cheap and they're tough and they don't take many pins off your Arduino. So let's get into some code. So before we actually get into the code example the library that I'm going to be using is the Adafruit NeoPixel library. Just type in NeoPixel into the Arduino IDE and it will bring up a few different libraries. Um, but I am using this particular library because I found it particularly good. So it does come with some examples. Uh, so if you go into your examples, once you've installed the IDE, go down to NeoPixel and there are various examples there. I basically took the simple example and then made my own versions from it. So let's have a quick look at how this works. So in this first example, I'm just going to show you a quick video of what we're trying to get. I'm afraid the video quality is appalling because my mobile phone just hates trying to film NeoPixels. So in that terrible clip of video, you would have seen a number of near pixels on a strip. I think about, I've got 16 on my particular strip. And you would have seen that some are really interfering with the camera, some are not. And that's because I've got them set at different colors 
and different intensities of brightness. One of the great things about NeoPixels, it's very easy to change the brightness. So you can set the NeoPixel to be blue, but you can set the sort of the intensity of how blue you want it to be. So let's have a look at the code. So the first thing we do is we include the Adafruit NeoPixel library. And then I'm defining pin 8. Pin 8 is the digital pin on my Arduino that's going to be using to control the NeoPixels. We then have to define the number of uh, NeoPixels. So on my strip I've got 16. And then basically we put the whole thing together to create an object. So the object we're going to create is called Pixels. And Pixels is going to control 16 near pixels on pin 8 and there's some other information there if you go into the Adafruit examples it tells you that there are occasions when you need to change this last piece of information I've never had to change it so it is as it is and it's always worked perfectly for me so going through the startup code and in this example there is only startup code there's nothing in the loop because we can learn just about everything we need to learn about using NeoPixels from this very simple bit of code. So the first thing that you need to do is start the NeoPixels up. So our NeoPixel object, Pixels, which we've created here, we then call the function begin and that starts it up. It initializes the whole system. It, everything's now connected. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function called clear and that turns all the pixels off just in case anything odd is going on. One of the things that you'll find is that if you um, upload some new code or if you've uh, even if if you just leave things alone, if you're not sending commands to a set of near pixels, they will stay on the same color settings that they were last set to. So here we go. I'm working through the near pixels. Now, the way it works, if you remember how this goes, when you connect to your Arduino, the near pixel closest to where your wires join in is near pixel zero. And because I've got 16 near pixels, as always, we start with address zero and therefore number 16 is actually 15. So let's work through it. So what I've done here, these values in here can be from 0 to 255 and they are RGB, red, green, blue. So on this one, I've set the green to 50. On the next one, I set the red to 50 and I've turned off the green, I've turned off the blue. On the next one, I've set just the blue to 50 and I've repeated that again so that's what I've done for the first uh, six LEDs then what I've done is I've gone 50 50 50 which means that I've set the light to white because if you put even amounts of red green and blue together you get white then what I've done is I've set a value to 255 I've got a bright red if you remember back to the little video, this is where you'll start to see the camera really having a bad time. 255, I've set a bright green. I've then set a blue. In fact, that should be a zero there. And that will be a bright blue. We've then got 255, 255, 255, which gives a very bright white. Then I've added... 50 red, 50 green, I get a yellow and so on. So as you play around with these numbers, any values between 0 and 255, you will not only alter the colour, but the intensity of the colour. So the higher the number, the more intense the colour is. Now when I built a control panel for my model railway, I used near pixels, and I must admit, I tended to set them at about 50. I found if they got much brighter than that, they weren't particularly pleasant to look at. Again, it depends what you're doing. If you're connecting, say, fiber optics to these things, you'll want them probably as bright as they can go. But depending what you're doing, if you're going to be looking straight at these things, you're going to need to turn the intensity down because it's going to really 
get into your eyes. Now there is an odd thing, you'll notice I've set all of these settings but at this point nothing happens until you send the command pixel show. Only at that time does it send all the data. So whether you're changing just one uh, near pixel or a whole bunch of them, you basically go through all of your settings, then you send the um, instruction pixels.show and off it goes, it changes all the colors. So that is example one. And now what we're going to do is have a quick look at example two, which is using multiple pixel strings. Now in this example, I'm using pins five, six and seven, and I've got three separate sets of near pixels attached. The reason for doing this, there are certain times if you're building things like model railways now and again, you can have a set of near pixels that are lighting up a particular building and it's very difficult to get the wires to go in and then come back out again to go into the second building so sometimes you'll just want to use multiple strips so this is how you do it so i've got near pixel pin one pin which is pin five on this particular strip i've got 16 near pixels and I'm creating an object and instead of calling it pixels as before I've called it pixels one. I've then repeated the same process I'm using pin six which I'm calling neo pin two. I've got 16 near pixels again and this time I create an object called pixels two and you can see we're repeating and I've done exactly the same for a third time round just for the example what I then do is we begin pixels one, we clear all the LEDs on pixels one and then we click on the show so it's got to clear it and then it needs show to show that they're all cleared. I've done that all three times through each string and then what I've done just as an example and you can go through this at your leisure on the Digital Town website it's an example there I'm not going to go through it in great detail but basically it goes through a counter from 0 to 15 which is obviously less than 16 and what it does is with each of these near pixels it basically works through the strip turning one on after another slight delay and it just works through them and then when it's got to the end and all 16 are done it clears all the near pixels and runs through again. It's just an example of how to run through the near pixels but running through multiple strips. I'm not going to show you the pictures but basically you'll finish up with one line of blue, one line of green, one line of red. Now in that last example I used the dreaded delay. It was quick and dirty. I was in a hurry but anyone who knows me knows I do not like using delay because if you use delay basically your Arduino stops and it will not respond to button presses or anything else that you want to have running in the background. So in this example what we're going to do is create a little twinkling effect. I'll try and give you the terrible phone video of it now. Apologies again for the absolutely lousy video, but it seems that when you shine near pixels into your phone, it messes everything up. So, how does this work? Well, as I said before, it's based on the first example, except this time we've created an array of unsigned longs called Neo My Neo Timers. You'll see why in a bit. And I've also got an array My Neo State. Again, 16 of each, one for each near pixel, because in this we're going to be using 16 different timers at the same time. I've left the initial startup code in just to leave it in there, just so you can see that everything's working. It delays for three seconds before the effects start. Within the main loop, I've got an integer called random brightness and integer Q. And what it basically does is it works through from Q equals zero to Q is smaller than 16. 
and what it does is it checks if each timer has expired. Now if you don't understand how time is, um, how you use millis for del uh, delaying and triggering events, there is a separate tutorial just on using millis for timers on the Digital Town website. There'll be a link at the um, on the same page on the Digital Town site as this tutorial. It'll be down at the bottom in the additional information if you want to learn more about that. But what it basically does is it says, right, if this particular near pixel is a value of zero, its state is zero, that means that the near pixel is turned off. So what it then does is it sets the millis timer for a random time interval. Um, I picked between 0.2 of a second and 8 seconds. Don't ask why, no idea. And then I set the state to 1. I've created a random brightness between 0 and 255, but you could have had that as a set value. And then what I've done is I'm setting the pixel color to the random brightness, because in this example, it's just going to be various brightnesses of white. If the LED was already turned on, so the state would have been 1, it goes into the else statement in which case I use a shorter random time period. I set the value to zero and I turn the near pixels off by setting that near pixels value to zero. Now, I cannot use um, the near the pixels uh, clear here because that would clear everything. And this is working individually. So it's working through all 16 near pixels very quickly. And then once it's done this little bit of code, it shows the value. So it changes the value after each individual near pixel has been checked and the system just runs round and round in a loop triggering the LEDs, the near pixels on and off at random intervals as you've seen. Now what I'm going to do for the final example we're going to do a very similar sketch except this time we're going to be doing it in colour. So as you can see from that terrible phone video again, this time I've got a strip of um, near pixels and this time they're changing their colors and their intensity of color at random intervals. So just like the sketch before, this time again I've got my uh, unsigned long for my array for my timers, my neo timers. Uh, I'm not using the uh, the other state because I don't need it for this particular sketch. I've left the initial startup routine just so you can check that it's all working and this time all it's doing is it's working through the um, near pixels and then each time it goes through this time it's giving a random setting between uh, 0.2 of a second and 4 seconds so it adds that amount each time to the timer Again, this means that each um, near pixel is actually going on its own random pattern. It's not affected by anything else. So you could adapt this type of code to do all sorts of different things. Then what I've got is instead of setting the color as I did before for various uh, brightnesses of white or turning it off completely, I'm just picking a random value between 0 and 255 for the red, the green, and the blue and then sending that to the near pixel and that then will give alternating shades different brightnesses different colors and you'll get the effect that you've seen so as you can see near pixels are pretty easy to use they're uh, again a single pin great if you're building model railways because again you don't need the dozens and dozens of pins that you often need if you're using lots and lots of LEDs. If you are using them in model railways if you've got the self-adhesive ones they're really good for sticking into the roof of buildings they will just stick on their own no need for any glue. But I hope this uh, tutorial has been useful for you and if it has please click the like and subscribe and don't forget that 
all the sketches and more information is available on the Digital Town website. The address will be below the video. Bye for now.